Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a Sultai deck titled Rogues Gone Rogue, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And unlike a typical Rogues deck, we're splashing green for some shapeshifters, which also gives us access to four copies of The Bears of Lejara as one of our payoff cards. A 3 mana saga that on the first chapter creates a 2 2 blue shapeshifter creature token with Changeling, meaning it has all creature types, including Rogue. On the second chapter, any number of target shapeshifters we control has a base, power, and toughness for 4, and that's not until end of turn, that's a permanent change. And on the third and final chapter, we choose up to one target creature or planeswalker, and each creature with power 4 or greater we control deals damage equal to its power to that permanent. This also gives us access to a nice removal effect if we can keep some of our 4 powered shapeshifters alive. Then another incentive to add green is that we get to play with a Realm Walker, a 3 mana 2 3 changeling. As it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type, and then we may look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of our library. So if we name Rogue, we can cast both Rogues and Shapeshifters from the top of our deck, so Realm Walker will provide a nice bit of card advantage. And then we also have two copies of Bloodline Pretender, a 3 mana 2 2 changeling. As it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type once again. And whenever another creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under our control, we put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Pretender. So once again, we'll grow from both the rogues and shapeshifters entering the battlefield if we name a rogue. Then at 2 mana, we've got more shapeshifters with four copies of a Guardian Gladewalker, a 1 1 that when it enters the battlefield, we put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature and two copies of Masked Vandal, a 1-3. As it enters the battlefield, we may exile a creature card from our graveyard, and if we do, we exile target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls, so it gives us access to a nice disenchant effect. And then another card you typically don't see in a rogue deck is Absorb Identity, a 2-mana instant that returns target creature to its owner's hand, so we can use it as a nice bounce effect to bounce an opposing creature. And then we may have shapeshifters we control become copies of that creature until end of turn. So if we bounce a large creature from the opponent, now all of a sudden we can turn all our shapeshifters into that creature and potentially set up a nice big attack. And another neat trick we can pull off with Absorb Identity is to bounce our own creature. And the creature we typically want to bounce with our own Absorb Identity is Soaring Thought Thief, the 2 mana 1 3 rogue with flash and flying. As long as an opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard, rogues we control get plus 1 plus 0. And whenever 1 or more rogues we control attacks, each opponent mills 2 cards. So Soaring Thought Thief is great in multiples, as we'll potentially get multiple plus 1 plus 0 bonuses and get to mill the opponent for 2 for each copy of Soaring Thought Thief in play when we attack. So that can also enable the ability in the first place. So all it takes is for us to bounce our own Thought Thief, turn all our shapeshifters into a copy of it, and then we can potentially still play the original Thought Thief afterwards if we've got the mana for it. And then another creature that's potentially worth copying with our own Absorb Identity is Thief's Guild Enforcer, the 1 mana 1 1 rogue with flash, and when it enters the battlefield or another rogue enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent mills 2 cards, and as long as the opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard, the Enforcer gets plus 2 plus 1 and has Death Touch. So if we can turn all our creatures into enforcers, not only do we have an army of death-touching creatures to attack with, but if we play any rogues or shapeshifters afterwards, we'll get to mill the opponent for quite a bit to potentially win by milling. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana we've got four copies of Merfolk Windrobber, a 1-1 rogue with flying that when it deals combat damage to the opponent, that player mills a card, and we can sacrifice a Windrobber at any time if the opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard to draw a card. And then at 2 mana we've got a bit of interaction with the full playset of Drown in the Loch, which can counter target spell or destroy target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. And then going over the mana base, we've got 2 of each basic land, all 12 pathways in our colors, as well as 4 copies of Zagoth Triome. And then we also get to free roll Gigantha the Wellspring as our companion, as we don't have any spells with 2 of the same colors in their mana cost. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand, facing a Yurion deck. And we get to go Enforcer into Enforcer plus Wind Robber. Opponent looks to be on a Sultai Ultimatum deck. Heartless Act, probably going to kill Enforcer here.
Alright, they're playing with Eerie Ultimatum instead. So an Amps on deck. And we have to make a decision. I've got a lot of three drops to potentially choose from. If I play Pretender, it can grow thanks to the Bears of Lejara as well. Probably a bit early to play Realmwalker. So I think I like Pretender before Bears. And then do we want to trade? I think so. Opponents also Doom Foretold deck. And Binding gonna take out our Pretender. Ugin the Spirit Dragon's gonna be hard to beat if it resolves. We'll follow Haven for a bit of ramp. Into a Solemn Simulacrum. So we will be able to attack into it thanks to our second chapter here. So step one, attack. Opponent does jump. So as much as it's nice to get the realm walker out there, I probably need to keep up mana to potentially draw into a Drown in the Loch if our opponent does have a big play like an Ugin or an Ultimatum. So I could play another Wind Robber and still draw with both to potentially find a Drown. Even though the sequencing would be better to play Enforcer first to melt the opponent a bit more. It's going to be a Palaka Predation, which can take the Realm Walker. And Binding of Titans, that's fine. Yurion goes to hand, we'll play Enforcer. Ooh, Absorb Identity. So we're not gonna find anything. So what does Absorb Identity do for me here? I guess not a whole lot. So we'll just hit for a bunch of damage. Could keep up Absorb Identity to maybe save a creature from removal. Or we could put Gigantha in hand. But if I put Gigantha in hand, I can't sack Wind Robber to maybe find a Drown to counter a big play. So I think we'll pass. Opponent gains two. And Garak Cursed Huntsman. If they mine us, we can finish it off with our Wind Robbers. So they're probably gonna make some Wolves. I can bounce one of the wolves with Absorb Identity and then take out Garruk. So I think we let that resolve. And I'll bounce one of the wolves now. Alright, so 
probably worth it to finish off Garrick. And then they probably trade for Enforcer. That's okay. Still have the option to draw into a counter spell if needed. Although probably not gonna do so for a Yorion. Opponent gets back Solemn Simulacrum. Since they can flicker it with Yorion to get extra value. Alright, that resolves. So don't have any great attacks at the moment. But we can play Gigantha, which can trade. And if we draw into removal for Yorion, the Flyers can keep attacking. Thought Thief is interesting. Still probably not worth it. Just play Gigantha. Binding can kill Gigantha, sadly. Opponent makes a token. Alright, Burst of Lujar is nice. So, on the third chapter, we can take out Urion. Just a land for the opponents. Don't think I need to play Thought Thief, or do we? Yeah, I think I'll hold it. Ooh, Absorb Identity. That's interesting. So, I can play Thought Thief, absorb it, to turn my shapeshifters into Thought Thieves. And then we'll have two Thought Thieves in play, attack with everyone. So all my creatures are three power. So had I played Thought Thief end of turn, this would have been lethal since I could have replayed it. As is... Might still be worth it. Because then we can finish them off with a Flyer next turn. Or I can wait since we have this third chapter incoming. Yeah, I guess we'll wait a turn. Opponent's creatures have death touch, that's fine. Binding of the titans shouldn't matter too much. Alright, so we get to combo off here. Opponent hits for four, we'll take it. Play Thought Thief. Untap, take out Yorion, and then gotta go for the Wombo Combo. Take action, play Thought Thief, and attack. And there we go, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Ideally, we find another land here so we can cast both our Gladewalker and the Thought Thief. For now, probably play this as a black source. Alright, that's great. So now we get to play a Thought Thief. And maybe follow it up with a Guardian Gladewalker. Opponent with a Giruda Doom of Depths deck. 
and can't quite play the Triome and play Gladewalker, so... Next turn we maybe get to keep up Drown in a Loch. And then Absorb Identity could also be an interesting one, bouncing a big creature like Giruda. Wind Robber cannot be played if we want to keep up a Drown in the Loch. So let's start by attacking. And I think we'll uh, wait on the Wind Robber for a turn. Could see an extinction event, which is worth countering. Cultivator. I think I also want to counter here. All right, let's play the wind robber. Could put Giganta in hand, but I would rather keep up Absorb Identity. So we now get the Thought Thief bonus. Another Cultivator is fine. Can play Gladewalker, maybe put counter on the Wind Robber. Tank for six, so we've got a two turn clock here. And we'll keep up Absorb Identity. And yeah, Bouncing Ruin Thought Thief could certainly be a line of play we can go for. Alright, Blood on the Snow to destroy all creatures. That is unfortunate, so we'll sacrifice a Wind Robber. Draw a card, can maybe find another Drown. And then I'm gonna absorb Identity Bouncing Thought Thief. Something else I could have considered is bouncing my own Wind Robber to turn my Changelings into the Wind Robber so I could sacrifice them to draw a card, but keeping the Thought Thief around seems nice. Alright, so now we can play Bears of Lejara and play this Thought Thief end of turn. Lucronos can find one of our creatures. So if I play the Thought Thief end of turn, they will just use Polychronos' ability before I get to untap and keep up Absorb Identity. So I probably just have to untap first. Thief's Guild Enforcer is good. Opponent's going to fight with Polychronos in response. So... Now what do I do? Probably Absorb Identity. Don't want to turn anything into Polychronos because it's a 0, zero. So let's just uh, bounce and not use the ability. It's a 4-4. Four, four. I can play Thought Thief pre-combats just to get in one extra damage. Or we can play around another sweeper effects, which is probably more important. And then just play Enforcer and Thought Thief end of turn. Opponent replays Polychronos. And 
And yeah, they can only fight one creature here. So if they fight the Thought Thief, my Changeling can take out Cultivator and we can attack for the win. As we see another Polychronos in the graveyard that Tipun could escape. Tipun's gonna fight the Thought Thief, but the third chapter takes out Cultivator. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Can play Mimic as a tap land, give us access to maybe a turn 2 Thought Thief. And then we could use a Mimic to copy the Thought Thief as well. The mana base in the deck definitely not amazing since we don't have a ton of actual dual lands unless we want to play Snarls, which have their own problems. Now I'm kind of liking Triome plus Wind Robber. And next turn play Thought Thief. Plus maybe an Enforcer as well. Right, opponent's got their own Enforcer. It's making my Mast Vandal easier to cast. Cacophony, so opponent's a more dedicated mill deck. Enforcer's already turned on. Could also decide to play a Bloodline Pretender before playing more rogues, although it does still trade for the Death Touching Enforcer, so it doesn't seem incredibly useful. So instead we'll play Enforcer into Thought Thief. And our opponent's got 8 cards in Graveyard now, so we get the Thought Thief bonus. The Fairy's Tutelage, we can destroy with our Masked Vandal, so nice to have an answer here. See a Zareth as well, another card we could be playing. Bears of Legera is nice, but I th think we need to answer the Tutelage before it's too late. Which means we have a pretty inefficient turn ahead of us. But that's alright. And then doesn't matter too much what we exile. And then I think I'm okay trading my Enforcer here. I think I do hang on to the Mimic since playing it as a land doesn't necessarily enable two spells in the same turn. And yeah, Into the Story was one of the main reasons I wanted to deal with Tutelage right away. Otherwise I would have milled us for a lot. Alright, so we'll play Mimic now. Copy Thought Thief. Attack for nine. Opponent's at 6, so they'll need some sort of sweeper here. Extinction event could be effective. Or Shadow's Verdict. Nighthawk Scavenger instead. Does have lifelink. And a Cacophony mills me for 8, so we're about halfway. Gladewalker to draw. So if I were to attack with everyone, opponent blocks the Thought Thief, takes 9, but gains 5, so they wouldn't be dead. If I play a Gladewalker first, they also could survive, but opponent decides to pack it in. Yeah, they're pretty far behind here, probably still worth it to attack, make the trade. Although Bears of Lejara eventually an answer to a Scavenger as well. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Probably playing the Mimic as a tapped land. Especially now that we drew a second one. And then turn to Thought Thief, take it from there. Of 
opponent black white a righteous valkyrie so some sort of cleric life gain deck can still attack with the thought thief just to melt the opponent a bit and then i don't mind copying it with the mimic to be mana efficient and then probably still play this as a blue source in case i want to double thought thief next turn This way we get to mill for four. Can maybe drown the Valkyrie as well. There's Vito. Okay. And Valkyrie stays back. Enforcer to draw. Only have a single black mana to work with this turn. So we could go Drown plus Gladewalker. Kill the Valkyrie, attack for a bunch. And then Gladewalker puts its counter on a Thought Thief, probably. And then... Probably want to put the counter on the Mimic instead of the normal Thought Thief in case we end up... Uh, Bouncing that one. Opponent did have a village right, so that's a nice response to our removal. But we do get to power up our rogues here. Opponent takes seven. And if we draw a swamp, we can double Thought Thief. Another Valkyrie. Into a youthful Valkyrie, so that triggers Veto. And a Realm Walker to draw. That seems decent alongside the Thief Skill Enforcer as well. So maybe I should start by attacking and see how the opponent lines up their blocks. And then we can maybe flash in a Thought Thief to surprise him. A card like Baneslayer Angel is going to be problematic. Opponent goes to damage, that's fine. And then play Realm Walker, see what's on top. A Drown, okay. And then we can keep Enforcer at instant speed. Alright, there's Baneslayer, but we do have an answer now with Drown. It is still gonna drain us with Veto. And then we can also play a Gladewalker off the top for free. So I'm gonna kill Baneslayer. I guess I might as well play this one first. And then put counter on maybe another Thought Thief. And then we'll drown. And attack with everyone. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Wanna try and get our Thought Thief in play as soon as possible. And then eventually try to copy it with Glass Pool Mimic. Opponent foretells a card. So it looks like maybe a blue-black control deck. Could main phase a Thought Thief to play around counter spells, but I think we'll keep up the surprise factor. And if they counter this, we can maybe resolve a Realm Walker. Alright, Poison a Cup to take it out. Did pick up a, another black source, so I could play Wind Robber plus a Thought Thief here. And then we'll keep Realm Walker for later. Once we have more mana available, we can maybe play our Shapeshifter and a creature of the top in the same turn to get immediate value. Opponent's gonna opt. And Haka, Whispering Raven, 
does a pretty good job on defense. Opponent foretells another card. So the Thought Thief can still attack. And I could copy it with Mimic now that the opponent's tapped out to guarantee an extra Thought Thief in play. And play Wind Robber. So this can attack. Ooh, Crippling Fear is going to be problematic. I think we still play the Wind Robber here. Six cards in Graveyard, so we're close to eight. Poison and Cup number two takes out Thought Thief. But as soon as we turn our creature sideways, we'll get the Thought Thief bonus. Yeah, I'll take the damage. They can replay Hakai if they want. Opponent keeps one card on top. And replays the Whispering Raven. Alright, so now is a good window for Wellwalker. See what's on top. Right, Glasspool Mimic for next turn. So probably just the Thought Thief attacking. Do I play Masked Vandal? Yeah, could be worth it. Another Crippling Fear gone, so that's what the opponent kept on top. But of course, they could have uh, expected us to mill it. Yeah, I don't know if we need to expect a lot of artifacts or enchantments. I guess Magic Mirror. So maybe we'll hang on to the Masked Vandal here. Opponent still missing double black for the Crippling Fear. E to Extinction on the Thought Thief. So won't be able to copy it next turn. Okay. Haka attacks. Having a second Realm Walker is good insurance against removal, I suppose. So can't get any value off the top, sadly, unless we sack a Wind Robber. Which could honestly be worth it, since it's not attacking into Haka anyway. So step one, attack. Sacrifice Wind Robber to see what's next. Another land. Do I sacrifice a second Wind Robber? I think I need to find more action. Could also put Jigantha in our hands. Yeah. Alright, Bears of Lijara is a good one for next turn. Could also cycle Triome and play it. Which seems okay. Thought Thief on top. Alright, that's probably worth it. Give up our bears to get some value. Could have tapped our mana, but better when we cycled in case we have uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer on top of our deck. Alright, we do not. So now we can copy the Thought Thief and play Bears. Opponent revealed Murderous Rider, but not an instant. And a Bloodline Pretender on top we could play as well. So let's stamp this for us now. Name Rogue. And then I think I like Mimic on Thief while they're mostly tapped out. And I'm fine trading. Opponent takes it. Alright, let's see if they have any sweepers here. There's a double black. Do they have a crippling fear? Just a murder strider on Thought Thief. That's acceptable. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, we had another couple Bears of Lejara to run out. 
probably fine to play the Masked Vandal with this turn just to be mana efficient and put another creature in play. So yeah, blue-black control wasn't able to cast its sweeper, and we milled a few copies as well. So yeah, overall this Sultai Rogues deck, an interesting take on the Rogues archetype. So if you're bored of the typical blue-black versions, this could be worth a shot. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.